Hey. Hi, I'm Max. I'm Tracy. Hey, Tracy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> okay, so. How are these moments of feeling like a complete chump? She stands us up. It's possible. That would be something. Is that her? That's her, right? <laughs> Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Leave. Max. I'm Max. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Tracy, who you know. It's nice to see you. Did you ever think this kind of thing would happen? No, not at all. So when you created Race, was the plan to give her cancer and kill her immediately? No, it wasn't. That was. I decided to do that after I realized it got too far. Whose funeral was that? My cousin's. So your cousin died? Yeah. You went to your cousin's funeral and filmed it. What? For me, the real question is, what kind of discussions have come up as a result of the fact that you guys live in the same I mean, city? There's been multiple times where she's she's been close, and then it's just not happened. She actually had her friend drive by my house one night. And she called me after the fact and said she left a note on my Jeep. Well, what did the note say? It said, like, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Boo Bear. She's even taken pictures of the outside of the work. And sent them and to you? sent them to me. That's creepy and kind of stalkerish. Yeah, it's, it's scary at times. In a sense, I was being watched. You have a stalker. It's... You've probably met this person. Why are you torturing yourself? How can I just leave somebody who I'm that tied to? I love who she is, and I can't break free of the hold she has on me. Wow. Well, you're very excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm trying not to like jump into her arms and plow her down to the floor. <laughs> but it's, it's not exactly the reaction that I expected. Yeah, if anything, <laughs> we've been kind of ready for the worst. I mean, look, we all want to be excited, obviously, yeah. but I just want to like get some things mm -hmm. out of the way first. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, you guys want to go sit down at that table in the shades? Oh. So, okay. From what we gathered from, from Blair's story was that you didn't come to New York, and then she got a strange phone call from you like a, a couple days afterwards saying that you were in a hospital of some kind and that you weren't gonna come and you were still in love with your ex-girlfriend and then it was over. I never got answers, I never got reasons, and that's all I want is why. So I was 17 and the man pretty much didn't connect me. I went on my own. What? What? He persuaded me to go with him because of issues that would happen in New York that he saw. He saw issues? How could he? Who's he? I don't get that. Is he an ex of yours? No. Oh. So I don't know who she, just he was. It's a very private situation. I can't really let out names. What had happened was I had a dream that I went to New York and I died. And I told him about the dream. And he told me that if I didn't go and repent my sins, I guess, I don't know. He didn't make it clear, but he told me pretty much if I didn't confess everything to him, I would die in New York. And so that pushed me to the limit as to where I felt like I needed to go for you, for me, for my family, so I could stay alive. I mean, were you, were you like far away in the middle of nowhere? I was up in the mountains. Why does this person have such so much influence over you? He was a close personal friend. You don't think you could have told this guy 
you need to let me know that you're not coming. No, because he didn't want to talk to you. He didn't want anything to do with you. You couldn't talk to me? I'm, just, I'm it's a terrible story, and I'm sorry that I still don't, I don't. Fully understand. I don't understand it. I know this probably feels like an interrogation. I don't want it to. But does it come as a surprise that you have a reputation for not telling the truth? No, because I have had people in my past say that I have a lying problem. But I do try my best not to lie to Blair. But you still do it. I try not to. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Hey man, you wanna chill out a second? Shh. Excuse me. Shit, man. For real. Don't touch me. Better back Seriously. up. Don't touch me. Better back what up. What kind of is this, Don't man? Better chill me. out, man. What the what kind of is this, man? We're talking. Him and I are talking. Yo, Excuse hey, you me? a oh, I'm I'm a second. He and I are talking. Excuse I'll just me. tell you one thing right now, Excuse buddy. Me. One thing you're gonna like, you're gonna learn to love it too. What the hell are you talking what, about, what's dude? What's going on? I'm gonna be the one wearing the pants in this one. Understand that? Dude, you're. What kind of is this? Being. Unreasonable. Straight up. The f kind of is this? I'm just asking you to take it down a couple notches. Hey, you brought a lot of attitude. By the way, a lot of attitude last night. Thanks a lot. Really felt it too. You and I got to know you better. I loved it. But I'll tell you what, you and I, we could do that later. Come here. We're going to talk. You what the f we got? We ain't really, we ain't got to, we don't talk. You, baby? Are you kidding me? You could still be my chocolate kiss too. You don't forget about that, baby. Come on. Come on. Hey. What the f is that? Can so, do you know this guy? Time no, out. Do you know this, this guy? No, I don't know this. Are you Jess? Yeah, I'm Jess. You're Jess. Yeah. Man. What? Man. I mean, this, this, that, there. That's what I have. What kind of is that, man? Oh, hell. God. Not everything is as it seems. Not everything you see or want it to be can be exactly what you want it to be. And I am living proof of that. And I felt that. And I felt the necessity to put myself out there. This is crazy. Hey, bro, how's it going? My name's Kelsey. I'm Adam the Gambler. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what's your end game here? Just have fun with you, man. That was it. You know, it was a game. It's over now. So this is all just fun and games? Yeah, really, it is, yeah. Is there something else more meaningful that you think you, you proved with, with this? No. There's no deeper meaning to any of this. Whose pictures are you using? <laughs> Actually, a girl I know from high school. Do you have a job? Are you in school? Yeah, this is like my job right now. I'll go here, I, I time the jackpot, so I'll just do whatever I want on my phone, time the jackpot, win about 60 bucks for the night, go home. How do you know you're gonna win the jackpot? I have an algorithm, you see? I count the number of people in here, right? And then I have like all the times on my phone. I could even show you that. I have all the times that they've ever gone off. He's rigged, right? Yeah. In between jackpots, there's like a transition period where you're waiting for the thing. So I'd log in here, pretend to be Kelsey, talk to him a while. It's just something to do to pass the time. Did you create that psychology group to lure people in to then, like, mess with them and carry on fake relationships with? You know, I took advantage of the fact that I had this group up. Yeah, no, let's, let's, uh, let's add this other account of mine in there and let's see who we can mess with, you know? How many people do you think you've catfished? I would say about maybe 30, 40, around there. <sighs> it's just interesting to me and fun. Is your relationship with Ellie something that you even care about? Or are you just using her? Oh, no, I care about Ellie. You know, she's my girlfriend. It's not a cover-up or anything like that. I, you know, I have genuine feelings for her. 
I've talked to Ellie before. Sweet girl, amazing girl. What in the world makes you think you're getting anywhere with that? I, I can justify anything. I can justify anything. So how'd you like my pick? Yeah, that was, uh, it's interesting. Thank you for sending it to me. I, I really want that on my computer. <laughs> you you yourself off to this <laughs> No, I deleted it quickly after. Did you just wake up this morning and say, you know what, I want to play a bad guy on TV. I just want to be the worst version of myself <laughs> that I can be. Is that what you decided? Yeah, that was what I, <laughs> that's. I mean, is, it, is this really who you are right now? This is really who I am. I'm the Joker. I mean, this is the kind of loser that gives our show a bad name. I mean, do we really sitting here yeah. giving him any airtime? Yeah, I'm the king of catfishes, right? No, you're not. I am. I am the king catfish. You're really not. I am. I'm done here. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, okay, we're done good. for now. We're all done all right, for now. Good. Yeah. Felicia, are you gonna say happy birthday? <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> Are you Courtney? Of course I am. Wow. Hi. Hi. Neve. Neve. You have your dad's eyes. <laughs> oh. You have your dad's eyes. Hi, honey. Are you telling the truth? Of course I am. Oh, of course I am. I would never, ever make something up like this that could be so, you know, potentially hurtful. I just, I knew that the situation was so strange. You know, the more I talked with your dad, the more I realized you know, something good has to come out of this. And I wanted to be able to give you that peace of mind. I wanted to be able to give you um, maybe some closure. Um, and... There's so much I want to talk to you about. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> It was so overwhelming for me, too, for the longest time, because I know the situation that he was in, and I know everything that happened. How did you know about that? He told me. He went through the story. It was not something that Frankie really wanted to happen. I know that he feels so much regret, and he struggles with the fact that his daughters do forgive him because he doesn't even think he deserves forgiveness himself so you you you've never you never met him in real life even though you grew up in ohio you never crossed paths with him in, no. in kentucky no no i've never i don't have any connection with him whatsoever and you did you read about this you know story when it when it happened and no this was something that happened in a small town in kentucky and it just there was no reason for me to get all the way up to northeastern ohio news and to be honest with you i never even knew that i had this ability i mean it was so overwhelming for me too for the longest time when he first showed up i remember i was in my room and I was focused very much on um, writing that I was working on. I felt, actually fell asleep at my laptop, and it was just a little, a couple hours later maybe, um, I woke up and I remember opening my eyes and I could see out of the corner of my eye, but I didn't want to look, but there was a figure at the side of my bed. And right then and there, I could pick up the feelings, he was, all, he was also confused. He was also very scared. He, he did not realize how he had gotten there, um, did not know why. And all I could think of was, well, he must need help. I assume at once he told you his name, you went on the internet and looked him up. Absolutely. Did I get on Google to confirm, am I crazy? Does this person and his story really exist? Because believe me, I was just as skeptical completely. There was quite a while when I actually thought, what if I'm insane? Like, what if I'm, like, schizophrenic? What if I'm losing it? Since this started, have you gone to any doctors to see if perhaps you might have a medical condition like a schizophrenia? Yeah, absolutely. I went to see a doctor, and I don't have any sort of personality disorder. I don't have schizophrenia. I don't have any of the mental illnesses. So it took me a long time before I really realized, no, he is, he is real. And I can hear him and I can see him. 